Good morning. We have just finished our checking our homework. We're getting ready to just do a little bit of reading. Uh, no homework questions tonight. Uh, the only video you have is this. Uh, your test, uh, you guys would be scheduled to take it on Friday. If you would like to take it on Thursday, you can, because you're not going to have homework again tonight, Tuesday, or Wednesday night, uh, so that you can study for your test. Uh, test is coming right off your homework questions. Uh, you only got three homeworks this time. Uh, there's only 20 questions because a lot of those will repeat, as you can tell. Gentlemen, I am trying to address the class. Hello. Sorry about that. Anyhow, um, and there will be a bonus question. My, uh, I would know the formula for figuring out kinetic energy. Okay, and just a helpful hint there. Okay, and now we're just going to start reading a little bit. Uh, may God be with us all. Okay. Uh, all right. Now, we are on page 151 in your science book. Uh, again, no homework questions tonight. Uh, but this, this is interesting. Some interesting stuff. Okay, good conversation. Uh, we're just, you know, I, I want you to be able, to, uh, again, we're trying to help those folks that are stumbling a little bit right now in science. Uh, this, you know, we have three homework grades to go in and your test. Um, and I was trying to help those folks that was hanging in there with a low C to add some points. Um, if you find yourself in that shape and someone is throwing you a lifeline to help you out, take it. Okay, we got a couple people that is kind of like, eh, that's okay. I'm happy with my C. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with a C. Nothing wrong with being average at something. Okay, if it doesn't click, the trouble is, it's not that it's not clicking. It's just that you're, you're just not doing the work. Uh, so if you're one of those people that I'm talking to, you know who you are. I'm not going to call you out by name or anything. But do better. Okay, do better. You're better than that. Okay, do everything you can. Uh, okay, every, everything that you do, you should do it to the best of your ability. You do it for the glory of God. So you should always do the best you can in everything. And if the best you can do on something is a C, that's okay. It's okay. Okay? But don't don't sell yourself short just because you don't like something or you, you're a little lazy sometimes, okay? Don't sell yourself short, okay? All right. Let's talk about forms of energy uh, on page 151. We talked about this a little bit before in some of our other reading. Uh, everything kind of starts to pull together. Um, this one starts off with, you're at the edge of your seat as the quarterback drops back to pass. Uh, he steps forward. He launches a deep pass. The ball soars down the field, drops it to the receiver's hand. The electronic scoreboard flashes, touchdown. And everybody jumps to their feet and cheers and all this stuff. As the crowd settles down, you shiver. The sun is setting. The afternoon is growing cool. A vendor hands you a hot dog, and it helps to heat up your hand. Leo, this could be why you don't can't keep up when we're checking homework because you and Brady are constantly talking. Okay. Uh, you can see the players more clearly when they turn on the stadium lights, okay? Uh, the thrown football, the scoreboard, the sun, the hot dog, and the stadium lights all have energy. And you have energy too, and energy comes in many different forms, okay? Uh, what kind of hot, what kind, what kind of energy does that hot dog have? Uh, yeah, it has it has heat. Uh, it talks about how it warms your hands. So it, it's warm. Your hands are chilly. So it's actually transferring heat to your hands to try to warm them up. Uh, remember, we talked about that before. Something cool does not, uh, uh, something hot, actually, w w how it cools down is it tries to warm up whatever it is cooler than it. That's why if you go to a convenience store, you're getting ready to go on a picnic or something, you go to a convenience store and you get a six-pack of Coke and you put it in your cooler and you put ice in there, okay, maybe the drinks was right off the shelf and they were hot. But by the time you get somewhere in an hour, an hour and a half, let's say, they're nice and cold. But the ice is melting. Well, it's if, it's inside, if it's inside a thermos, 
container, why would the ice melt? Okay, it's designed not to. So what's happening is, believe it or not, the Coke inside of the can is warmer than the can. And the can is warmer than the ice. So the Coke actually starts giving off heat to the can to try to raise it up to the same temperature. And by doing so, it's transferring heat to the can, so it's starting to cool down. Yes. Well, the can is now transferring, trying to warm the ice up to its temperature, so it's transferring heat to the ice. So the ice is getting warmer, the Coke in the can is getting colder, and that's why the ice melts, because it's actually transferring heat. So it's not like ice makes it cold. Okay, it's actually transferring the heat to the ice. That's why it's getting cold. Weird, isn't it? But that's how it works. You don't have to trust me on this. Got deer in the headlights, like, oh, no, whatever. Okay. Uh, do you remember the pass thrown by the quarterback? A football thrown by a quarterback has mechanical energy. So does a moving car or even a trophy sitting on a shelf. Okay. The form of energy associated with position and motion of an object is called mechanical energy. So basically, kinetic energy plus potential energy equals mechanical energy. Okay? I know. An object's mechanical energy is that combination of potential energy and kinetic energy. Okay? So you can find an object's mechanical energy by adding kinetic and potential energy together. Uh, and it uses the example of a football that the guy threw, okay? Uh, a football thrown by a quarterback has both potential energy and kinetic energy. The higher the football, the greater its potential energy. Think about a guy who throws that Hail Mary, you know, he throws it 60 yards down the field, but it's just that long arc pass. Just, you know, hoping a prayer that somebody on his team actually catches it. Um, it's got a lot of potential energy because he throws it really high. But it's also got kinetic energy because it's moving. Okay? Uh, if he throws a, a short pass, of like a quick down and out type of thing, it's got more kinetic energy than potential energy because he's throwing it harder and a shorter distance, and he's not arcing. He's, he's, it's almost like a bullet pass, as they call it. Okay, uh, but you can add the potential energy and kinetic energy of a football down here in the picture uh, to find its mechanical energy. Okay, um, the football has 32 joules of potential energy due to its position above the ground. It also has 45 joules of kinetic energy due to its motion. So the total mechanical energy of that football that he just threw was 77 joules. You add those together. And you get 77, okay? An object with mechanical energy can do the work on another object. In fact, you think about mechanical energy as the ability to do work. So the more mechanical energy an object has, the more work it can do, okay? Um, then we talk about other forms of energy, okay? Um, we've talked about... Uh, energy that involves motion and position of an object, but the objects can have other forms of kinetic and potential energy. And most of these other forms are associated with particles that makes up objects, okay? These particles are too small to see, forms, uh, uh, okay? And they forms of energy associated with the particles of objects include thermal energy, electrical energy, chemical energy, and nuclear energy, as well as electromagnetic energy, okay? Thermal, what do you, what do you think, when you think about thermal energy, what do you think about? Heat, like heat. Heat, yeah, you think about heat, okay? Um, all objects make up particles called atoms and molecules. Because these particles are constantly in motion, they have kinetic energy. The faster the uh, particles move, the more kinetic energy they have. Okay? And these particles are arranged in specific ways in different objects. And um, 
Therefore, they also have potential energy. So the total potential and kinetic energy of particles in an object is called the thermal energy. Okay, it's thermal energy. Look at uh, the volcano here. Okay, even though the lava may be flowing uh, slowly down the volcano, its particles are moving quickly. Okay, because the particles have large amounts of kinetic energy, the lava has a large amount of thermal thermal energy. Energy. Okay, so it's giving off a bunch of heat, obviously, because if you stick your hand in there and try to pet the lava, you don't have a hand anymore. Okay. Why would you pet Okay. I don't know. Some people are crazy. Maybe you confused it with a llama. Uh, I don't know. Okay. Yeah. If you've ever eaten ice cream, okay, if you ever got your big old cone of ice cream, you walked outside and it's a warm summer day. Oh no. Yeah, what happens? It starts running down over your hands, right? What's happening is the same thing with the ice and the drink. The air that is going by is warmer than the ice cream. So it is trying to warm, as it goes by, it's trying to warm the ice cream up to its temperature. So therefore, it makes the ice cream start to melt. If you could actually measure the temperature as it went by and made contact, the air would actually cool down ever so slightly as it went by because it is transferring heat to the ice cream. And that's why you get sticky hands because it is melting and running all down over your hands, okay? Okay. I hate when you get syrup on the yeah. All right, electrical energy, okay? When you receive a shock from a metal doorknob, how many of you have ever done that? Yes. Yeah. yeah. You got on, if, if you've never done it, when you get home, pull off your shoes, go into a carpeted area, and really, really, really rub your feet really good over the carpet, and then walk up and touch a doorknob. Yeah, it will shock you. It won't like knock you. It won't knock you down. But you, it is enough that it will go out. It'll shock you. You can actually do it to another person sometimes too. You can actually shock another person. Uh, yes. Yeah, trampolines would do it. Uh, if you pull a, le a, a blanket sometimes out of a a, a dryer, you, it'll, it'll have static electricity. You'll see all. But if you do it, if it's dark. And you, do, you can actually see a spark. You're actually generating just a spark of electricity. It's pretty cool. I've seen yeah. it at night, yeah. Once I was switching yeah. out pillowcases. Hold up, I caught on one person. So once I was switching out pillowcases and I pulled it off and had like little lightning pieces at night. Yeah. And I could, I didn't make like a whole bunch of noise and I thought it was good. Yeah, yeah, Fire. you can hear, like you can hear it correctly. Uh, the static electricity is when, uh, you know, you ever, you ever, your mom ever do, do laundry and you're missing a, uh, one of your socks or whatever and you, you go to get your pants that you, you know, washed for you and there's a sock stuck on the leg somewhere. That's static electricity. It, it just, it, for whatever reason. Of course, they got all kinds of really cool stuff now that you put in the laundry to try to help stop that. But why would you want to? It's fun. Yeah. What? Yeah, that would, that would yeah, something plugged in was definitely electrical energy. Okay. Uh, all right. But anyway, when you receive that shock from a metal doorknob, you're experiencing electrical energy. The energy of, uh, of electrical charge is electrical energy. Depending on whether the charge is moving or stored, electrical energy can be a form of kinetic or potential energy. Lightning is a form of electrical energy. Uh, you rely on electrical energy from batteries or electrical lines to run devices uh, such as flashlights, handheld games, radios, things of that nature. Yes, Miller? Um, it's probably about two hours. So one time me and my brother were having a sleepover. And we had this really, really, really cool big blanket. And we were going to walk our earth for it. When we got it off, you could actually see like, the lightning. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. You could see the lightning spark through the blanket. Absolutely. You can. Light. Okay. Uh, chemical energy. Almost everything you see, touch, or taste is composed of chemical compounds. Uh, chemical compounds are made up of atoms and molecules. Uh, bonds between the atoms and the molecules host the chemical compounds together. Uh, these bonds have chemical energy, okay? 
Chemical energy is the potential energy stored in chemical bonds that holds chemical compounds together. Chemical energy is stored in the foods you eat, the matches that you use to light a candle, even the cells of your body, okay, has chemical energy. Uh, when bonds and chemical compounds break, the new chemical compounds may form. And when this happens, chemical energy may be released. Okay? Yeah, your body is, a, is an amazing thing, the way it works. Uh, very intelligent, intelligent, don't live in the I can't talk. It was designed by a very smart guy, okay? <laughs> God, God, I mean, he, I don't know if he actually put a lot of thought into it or if he just, because he's God, he's just like, okay, we're going to make this really cool. And he did it. But either way, it's really cool. Your body is an amazing piece of work, I tell you. Uh, it really is. The things that it can do and the way it will work. And uh, um, I mean, that's why people sometimes have trouble losing weight. Um, you know, that, that trying to lose that 10 pounds uh, before the big dance or whatever, so you fit into the dress or, the, you know, your tuxedo or whatever it is. Uh, and you start trying to go into a calorie deficit, well, what happens is your body eventually, you, you'll lose some, but then your body will start going, wait a minute, wait a minute, and it will go in a, into a shutdown mode and start slowing down your metabolism because it, it doesn't quite understand, you know, it knows it's starting to use up some stored energy, if you would, and it's like, no, no, I don't, I don't want to let that go, so it, it slows down to keep... Now, eventually, it will start up again, but that, that's why, okay? Your body, your body is a pretty amazing what, all they can, what they can accomplish, okay? Uh, nuclear energy, a type of potential energy called nuclear energy is stored in the nucleus of an atom. Nuclear energy is released during the nuclear reaction. One kind of nuclear reaction known as nuclear uh, fission occurs in nucleus splits. Uh, nuclear power plants use fission uh, reaction to produce electricity. Another kind of reaction known as nuclear fusion occurs when the nuclei of an atom uh, atoms fuse or join together. And the nuclear uh, fusion uh, reaction uh, occurs continuously on the sun. Uh, that is like setting loose. I see you, man. Uh, it's like setting loose. Uh, a number of atomic bombs just repeatedly. Remember the surface of the sun? That's what they talked about. Uh, like an atomic bomb going off every second. Just, and if you've ever seen the pictures of the devastation that an atomic bomb can cause, that's pretty, that's pretty amazing. Yes, sir? Isn't that caused by like when you split the atoms from each other? It is. It is. It is. It's crazy how it takes only one atom to cause all that. Well, that, and, I mean, yeah, it, it, it is. All right, electromagnetic energy, the sun that you see each day in the form of electromagnetic energy. Uh, electromagnetic energy travels in waves, okay? These waves have some electrical property and some magnetic properties. Uh, microwave is used to cook your food. X-rays, uh, doctors use to examine patients are types of electromagnetic waves. Other forms of electromagnetic waves uh, or energy include ultraviolet radiation, infrared radiation, and radio waves. Uh, if you recall, when we did astronomy, we talked about how thing, a lot of things moved in waves. We get into light and sound, we're going to see that things move in waves. Uh, we get into marine biology, you're going to see how things move in waves. Air, wind, water, sound like it goes on and on how things moves in weight. So if you, if you kind of think about it for a second, what that's telling you is, you ever heard the expression, if it, you know, you don't have to reinvent the wheel, okay? If you got something that works, you might improve upon it, but you're not going to, you don't have to reinvent it. Well, God hit upon something that worked, and he used it throughout the universe on, on the, the, all kinds of things moves in waves, which kind of points out, if you think about it, kind of shows that there's one creator. Okay, that kind of points to one creator when, when the same formula is used repeatedly to make different things work. Okay, because 
If I was working on something, Macy's working on something, Savannah's working on something, Catherine's working on something, and we're in four different parts of the world, and neither one of us knows what the other one is working on, you know, working on the same thing, we're probably not going to come up with the exact same formula, right? Yeah, probably not. We're going to have different opinions on how this thing should work. But everything in our universe works very smoothly, which kind of points to that one creator. All right, guys, hope y'all enjoyed that a little bit. Again, test will be just on your homework question. It's energy, potential energy, and electrical energy. And know the formula for kinetic energy.